Well guys, beautiful day is upon us. The sun is starting to break through the clouds. The rain just quit and I'm out at my sawmill. Life cannot get too much better. What I'm going to talk to you guys about today is something that I read recently in the comment section. Now I try to read every comment you guys leave for me and believe me, some days there are a lot of them and I'm not complaining. That's great. I love hearing from you guys, but I just can't get to all of them. This one in particular though, I did come across and it stuck out in my mind and hence why I'm sharing it with you. This comment is from one of you viewers named France, Francis Rodrigue, and I hope I pronounced that right. Francis, you had mentioned something about uh, piles of wood chips and how there's potential for fire. And I started thinking to myself, well, how is that related to hay fires? And you may know what I mean by a hay fire. So hay fire is when uh, farmers go out and they, they cut their hay and it's a little damp still. They put it up in a barn and over the course of decomposition, we get a bit of heat generated and that can create a barn fire. I know about that, but then I started thinking, how does that relate to say a chip pile? I had not once had it crossed my mind that a chip pile like this, which as you've seen in other videos is common here. I tend to chip my off cuts and branches and stuff. I had no idea that this has the potential to generate heat. Anyways, that's what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about today. Generating heat and the potential for a fire hazard right underneath your nose. So what I ended up doing after I read this comment and after I actually came out here, I thought I better do a little bit of research and figure out, is this actually a danger? I know you guys often have really good advice for me, but as you can imagine, I want to sort of get a better idea what you're talking about. So I did a bit of research. I ended up finding some documentation from the Ontario Fire Marshal and Emergency Management People. Okay, so the Ontario Fire, Fire Management People. They had talked specifically about piles of wood chips. They put out this document and the document is related to a huge ice storm that happened in eastern Ontario here in Canada back in 1998. What had happened then was we had a huge ice storm, trees were down and those trees had to be processed and so there was a lot of wood chip piles around. What was discovered was that a lot of spontaneous combustion was happening in many big wood chip piles. There's a few reasons for that and hence why the Ontario Fire Marshal took it upon themselves to pub publish documentation about it. So what does it say? Well, I read through this and basically what it says is limit your pile sizes. So when you have wood chips like that, limit the sizes. Avoid compaction of the pile. So don't get it too high. Don't stack it on top of one another. Prepare fire department access to the, to the pile. Now, that's that's kind of a funny thing for me to think about but in reality maybe it is something i should think about maybe i should think about how would i ever get here to put out a fire if it started smoldering avoid maintaining large piles of wood chips for an extended period so if you're going to have wood piles or uh, wood chip piles don't keep them around for too too long in fact in here i think it goes on and talks about three months don't try to keep it for too long especially not beyond three months it also mentions that piles should be wet, so you should be spraying them. Now I know it just rained, but let's face it, summer's just getting over here and we had a, quite a long stretch without rain. This stuff probably would have been quite warm at one point. Is it gonna be warm enough to spontaneously combust? I don't know. Check this out though. It just rained, right? This pile, if I were to dig my hand into it, it's actually, and I'm not joking here, I'm not just blowing smoke, no pun intended. I'm putting my hand there. I'm probably only about four inches, five inches under the top of the pile. It is warm. I'm getting deeper. Honest to goodness, it is getting warmer. I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys see that? There's actually steam because of the moisture in the air that you can see coming out of the inside of this pile. And I kid you not, as I dig my hand in here further and get down there, have a look. As I dig my hand down in there further, look at that. You see that? You guys see the steam? That's not my breath. That's coming out of the pile. Now, as I get deeper, aside from that spider right there, maybe I'll stand back a bit. As I get deeper, it's actually getting warmer. Have a look. You guys see that? So I'm literally not making this stuff up. And when I read that comment by Francis, I was, I was thinking, oh yeah, being very cautious and I appreciate it, but maybe it has no application here until I came out here and I dug my hand in there 
And then I read that literature over there and I started thinking to myself, I gotta be more careful. So this is a small pile. Like, look at this pile here. How big is that? What is that? Three and a half, four feet high? Four feet high and I don't know, covers an area here. What, 100 square feet? Nothing, right? Very, very small. Is this enough to cause a spontaneous combustion where enough heat is generated in a pile to cause a fire? Well, hard to say, right? A whole bunch of variables that come into play here. What the pile is made of. The literature suggests that piles of wood chips that have a high concentration of bark in it actually can combust faster or more likely to combust. The size of the pile is a big factor. The type of wood, how often it gets rained on or how often it gets wet, whether the pile gets higher and higher and higher. Anyways, those are factors you got to consider. And so this is quite alarming to me and why I'm telling you. So I have an understanding what's going on here. Now, when I say understanding, I mean scientific understanding. There is bacteria that is decomposing various parts of this wood and all the debris that's in there. It is said based on this literature that that bacteria over the course of a two week period can potentially get the temperatures inside that pile to 66 degrees Celsius. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, the outside temperature here is about 10 degrees Celsius. When I reach my hand in there, I'm going to say it's probably 25, give or take. Like, it's warm. It's a warm, uh, warm temperature. 66 degrees after two weeks, assuming the temperatures are right. So this is probably taking into consideration the air temperature outside the pile as well. But that's, that's wild. 66 degrees. It also talks about the surface to volume ratio. And what that's referring to is, if you guys have a look here, when I pick this stuff up, these chips have an overall size to them, right? A length, the width, the height. Now this is called the surface area. The surface area changes based on what you've got. And if we have a look there, I dug a hole in that pile with my hand not that long ago. And this stuff is different. This stuff is sawdust. See the difference there? Different materials have different surface areas. And when you compare those surface areas to the overall volume of the pile, those different ratios can dictate whether one will spontaneously combust faster than the other, or supposedly. Now, if I dig my hand in here, because keep in mind, this is mostly sawdust. It's sort of a mixture right now, but if we get down in here, okay? You guys with me? I'm just going to dig a little hole in here. Honest to goodness, I'm about a foot in here. Nope, oh, down here. I'm about a foot in here, okay? And you guys can see the... Uh, you guys can see the uh, hole I just dug. Honest to goodness, that stuff is like warm apple pie right there. I'm not going to eat it, but you get it, right? Can you guys see the steam rolling out of there? So there is bacteria that's breaking down this material. This will potentially raise the temperature inside the pile. This could be if we get outside of our size requirements or if, what am I trying to say? If we make a pile that's too big, there is potential that the heat that's generated inside that pile could get to the point where we have ignition, spontaneous combustion. Now, the Ontario Fire Marshal and Emergency Management people and their documentation here, they suggest that there are two basic types of storage of these wood chips and sawdust and that. There's a permanent storage, so we're talking about maybe it's a uh, commercial business and they've got wood chips piled up and they sell it or who knows. And then there's a temporary setup. This is a temporary storage setup. They have different parameters that they request you follow or recommend you follow in order to prevent or limit your chances of combustion. Now, here's what they say for a setup like this. They're saying that the overall, uh, let's see, the overall size is dictated by how long it's going to be stored here. You should try to reduce storage in a temporary spot uh, to, less than, to less than three months. So if you're going to store for more than three months, make sure you follow this. They say the pile should be four meters at the width. So four meters is give or take about 12 feet <clears throat> at the base. And it should be no more. Sorry, let me rephrase that. The peak of the pile should be no more than four meters. That's 12 feet high. Okay, obviously this doesn't fit that parameter. And the base should be no more than eight meters wide. Eight meters wide is about 24 feet. These piles should be limited to a maximum bulk volume of 100 cubic meters. 
okay so four meters high 12 feet eight meters wide you're looking at about 24 feet total thousand cubic meters maximum that's if you're going to store a pile temporarily for more than three months so a temporary location like near my sawmill for more than three months it also says uh, make sure this the shape of this actually follows a triangular shape with 45 degree side slopes so that's kind of interesting so this obviously doesn't really form a shape but what they suggest is if you need to form a shape to maintain the safety keep it as a triangle you guys know what a triangle looks like and keep the sides angled at about 45 degrees up to the peak quite interesting and definitely nothing i would have known about without coming across this literature now that literature also suggests that if you are maintaining a thousand cubic meters of volume and you're maintaining eight meter wide base four meter high uh, peak what that's going to equate to is approximately a 67 meter long length so eight meters wide four meters tall and 67 meters long if it's maintained in somewhat of a triangular shape and i don't know how i would do that with my tractor but let's say it was that'll give you approximately a thousand meters squared they suggest that being the maximum volume you keep in any one spot and they also talk about some things that even if you're maintaining those dimensions you look out for look out for compaction so don't don't bash the thing down here and try to make it take up less room because compaction could lead to uh, a greater fire danger they also talk about periodic wetting so wetting down your pile and that never crossed my mind once but it does now wetting down your pile with something more than simply just rain if it's really dry out and making sure that you're periodically che checking it for uh, temperature well guys i learned something new and i want to thank you for commenting there francis and everyone else who's going to share stories and explain some of the experiences they've had around spontaneous combustion this is potentially a game changer, not only for me, but for many of you who maybe didn't know about this. As I said, I had a solid understanding of putting away wet hay and the dangers there, but I had no idea that applied to piles like this. Now, bear in mind, these are small piles. You guys saw how the temperature is quite noticeable. If I weren't paying attention to this, and let's just say I got carried away and I let it pile up for years, well, maybe I'd have a problem. Would it be a problem in this small pile? The odds are probably in my favor, but let's face it. If I were to have a fire out here, and you guys look around here, there is no shortage of kindling. These are red pines, and that's probably a good six inches, maybe eight inches of, uh, of soft uh, pine needles on the ground there. A fire would devastate the entire forest, and that would pretty much be the end of my saw milling. So thanks for sharing that with me. And if you guys have any additional information to share, stories, I'd love to hear about it down below in the comments. As always, you guys be well out there, be safe, and I'll see you next time.